You're listening to Rambling to Nobody with your host, me, Nathan. Hi. So I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. That's not true. I know exactly what I'm going to talk about, but I made you think I wasn't, or I didn't. So here's how this podcast is kind of set up, right? I'm going to pick a topic that interests me, that's on my mind, that I want to talk about, and I'll just talk about it. And right now, I feel like talking about baking. Holidays came up, you know, Thanksgiving, not that long ago. And one of my favorite things to do over the holidays is bake. Bring baked goods to parties, family gatherings. It's uh, something I really enjoy. It brings me a lot of satisfaction, especially compared to cooking. Baking is just so much easier, you know. Just follow the steps. It's very uh, scientific in that way. As long as you follow the steps, as long as you do things by the book, it should turn out about the same every time. There's cooking. It's more like instinct-based. It's more best judgment. You know, add a pinch of this seasoning cooked to, to this time based on when it feels right. And I can't do that, right? It's, it's, it's not something I'm good at. I don't have that instinct. So I've never been a good cook, but I love baking. So for Thanksgiving, I made baklava, right? It's, um, if you don't know, it's this Greek dessert. Imagine like a lasagna, but not at all like a lasagna. Like you got the layers, you know, instead of a, a filling of cheese or whatever, it's, Chopped nuts tossed with uh, cinnamon, and it's got layers of this thin dough called phyllo. It's very, um, very thin, very crispy, very, very good. Um, it's a, it's a pretty. It sounds like it'd be a healthy dessert, right? I haven't said anything about sugar, you know, but that's where you'd be wrong because at the very end, when you're done baking it, you drench it in uh, the simple syrup, right? It's got vanilla, honey. Uh, usually I make it with orange zest, a little bit of uh, cinnamon in there too. It's pretty good. It's something I've brought to pretty much every like family gathering that I've had for the past year or two now. Honestly, might be getting a little a little sick of making it at this point, but it's it's the one thing that's pretty pretty simple, pretty easy to make, hard to get wrong. Now that, that stopped me in the past. I mean, I've, this last time I made it, oh boy, just, just everything went wrong. Too little dough, too many nuts, not enough butter. There's butter in that. You know, you put it between the sheets, make it all nice and, and glossy looking. But this time it just did not turn out right. It wasn't great. It was fine, but it could have been better. I think that's how it is with a lot of um, baking it usually will turn out right. If you know what you're doing, it'll usually turn out right. But then there's always something you forget, something you do a little differently, a little wrong, and then it just does not work. You cook it for a little too long, maybe it's a little too hot, it got an oven that's a little different. That's, that's mostly what happened in my case. Set the pan on to, to boil, doing the simple syrup first, right? I was following the recipe, because I always follow the recipe. I know what I'm doing. But I make sure I, I follow the recipe to the T, to the letter, right? And the recipe said, set the pot on medium-high heat until it boils. Set it down to low to medium heat and let it simmer for a couple minutes, right? And I do that. But this is a new stove. Never used this stove before. Apparently, this stove heats up really, really fast. This, this pot boils over in seconds. I look away, I look back, like it is rising rapidly. It, it has doubled, tripled in height, and it is now spilling over all over the stovetop. It's just a horrible, horrible mess. I, I salvaged it, but still, not great. But then I, I like trying recipes that fight me, recipes that are, are difficult and that are new and, and, and something I've never seen or heard of before. I've tried making uh, macarons, macaroons, one of the two. I know they're two different things. Point is, those uh, little hamburger-looking pastries, right? 
got the bright pastel colors. Those were a pain. I followed the recipe to a tea, and it still turned out not as good as it could have. It was fine, but it was a very difficult process and not something I ever want to do again. But I enjoy doing new things just to be able to say that I've done them. I've made um, another recipe, kind of oddball compared to what I'm used to, called, I want to say, Speckwick, something like that. It's a, it's a thousand layer uh, cake, not actually thousand layer. That's, that's the, uh, the name, right? Thousand layer cake. And what you do is you get like, uh, two batches of batter, right? One is colored with all of these spices, like this really rich, dense mix of spices. And then one is very pale and uncolored and you bake it one layer at a time on a broiler. And usually when you bake, you do it with convection, but this one said to do, uh, Broil. That's new. That's unusual for me. I, I've never seen that before. So I try it, and lo and behold, it just does not work. It gets burnt on the bottom layers. It's undercooked on the top. It's just horrible. Not good at all. I salvaged it somewhat by just making it like a regular cake. It had no layers whatsoever. It was a sort of denser kind of cake than a usual, an usual sort that you'd make. But um, it was still pretty good. It was very, very flavorful. The, the, the spices worked really well together. So I'm sad it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to, but it was still a good cake. I, I enjoyed it. It was sort of a, almost like a gingerbread, I wanna say. Recently, I've been pretty interested in like Middle Eastern Mediterranean desserts. And, and and baking with those sorts of recipes in general, like I've tried um, another, I'm pretty sure it's Greek recipe called Spanakopita, I believe. Something like that. Something like uh, spinach pie, I want to say, which doesn't sound great on paper, right? It's, it's a pie full mostly of uh, spinach, as the name would suggest. But it's actually pretty good. It's got the phyllo dough I was talking about earlier. Very thin, very crispy, very light. Spinach and feta. I think some eggs as well. And you just bake all that together. And it turned out really nice. Not at all was that what I was expecting for a, a mostly spinach uh, dish. I, I would make it more often, but it, it's still kind of an involved process for what it is. You gotta boil the spinach, you gotta drain it really, really well, which is surprisingly time consuming. The main thing is the chopping. There's a, there's a lot of spinach you gotta dice up pretty finely. Not too fine, but it, to the point that it's, it's a lot. I enjoy baking for the, the activity of it. Right. It's, it's easy to get lost in the steps, in, in following the measurements, and, and, and it's almost like doing a puzzle. You just focus on the one thing, you know, the one task that's right in, right in front of you. It's hard to get wrong, and it usually tastes good at the end. But that doesn't mean it's not always calming. I've, I've tried to make bread. I tried to make bread over uh, Thanksgiving. Like a nice sandwich bread. I found this recipe. It looked pretty simple. It's just flour, yeast, water, sugar. And I think that was about it. There might have been one or two other ingredients, but it was pretty simple altogether. This is not my first time making bread. I've tried to make sourdough before in my own sourdough starter, which was a pain in and of itself. That fought me the whole way through. Wouldn't rise, smelled kind of funky. When I finally did make the sourdough, it was way too airy and full of holes on the outside edge, but on the, the middle core bit of the, the loaf, it was dense, like really, really dense, not at all what you'd like for a, uh, a sourdough. So it just wasn't good. I have, have never tried to make bread since then. 
But I figured it's been long enough. It's been a couple of years. I can try it again. Maybe not a sourdough, right? This is more of a, almost like a white bread. So I try it. I follow along and it just still fights me, you know? It, uh, cause I don't know what I'm doing, right? I don't know how to properly knead the dough. I don't know how to handle it without it getting stuck to everything, including my hands, which is a real fiasco to deal with. When to be sure that it's risen enough, when to be sure that the, the yeast has been proofed long enough, right? It's all very, I mean, I say I like baking because the steps are all very cut and dry. You follow it to the letter, you get the, the desired outcome. But with yeast and with dough and things like that, it's a living thing. So it's going to do what it wants. It's more based on estimate than anything. And, and that's not something I'm great with. So I was fully expecting this bread to turn out horribly. Sourdough 2.0, right? A repeat of the last time I tried to make bread. So I put it in the oven, right? It's a decent looking hunk of uh, dough, right? Throw it in the oven, set it to the, the time it says to bake it. Um, the temperature, the, the, the timer's all set how it's supposed to be. And I wait for it to get like golden brown. Now that was my mistake, right? I give it a good 10 to 15 minutes over the recommended bake time. And it just, it looks the same every time I look at it. Finally, I pull it out. And uh, lo and behold, it's just covered in flour, right? Something, there's, there's some layer of something over the top that is hiding the fact that it is definitely finished. Now, thankfully, I didn't give it that much longer. You know, I didn't give it too long. It was just a little, a little toasted around the edge, right? It felt rock solid. I was very, very worried for a moment, but I cut into it after it cooled. And it was actually pretty decent. It was, it was soft in the middle. It wasn't like super dense. It had the expected amount of holes that you would expect to see in a, uh, a nice loaf of bread. So it turned out pretty well. I, I was very surprised with that. And like price-wise, actually pretty affordable. For two loaves of bread, for like decent medium-sized loaves, right? I, I, I calculated it out. I checked how much we spend on ingredients at our uh, local grocery store. And a normal loaf of bread costs somewhere between like 3 and $5, right? A little more if you're getting a fancier loaf, potentially closer to like $2 if you're getting a cheaper loaf. But in terms of ingredients used, it comes to about $1 to $2, give or take. Um, and again, that's for two loaves. So you're spending about half as much for a loaf of bread compared to store-bought if you make it at home which is actually pretty economical. Now, mind you, me and my family were not huge bread eaters. Uh, so this wasn't a great like financial revelation, you know, because we don't usually buy bread anyways. But I, I still got some good use out of the bread. Made some French toast, uh, did like a nice pan fried toast, I guess. Pan fried bread, I don't know what you'd call it. A little bit of uh, olive oil. Actually, really good. Had more uh, more flavor than bread and oil alone have any right to have. Surprisingly good. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think I've rambled enough about this for, uh, for one day. Uh, thank you for listening if you have and uh until next time